What do you do when you don't know what to draw? You ask somebody. Or you go to the We The Creators Discord channel and look at their challenge prompts. Challenge 58 says, draw a travel poster from a fictional location. This sounded pretty fun. I always love to do landscapes. And these travel posters styles, I like them. They're simple yet satisfying. So I already did one in Illustrator and I'm excited to show you that, but I, I decided to up the ante a little bit. Let's try it as well in Photoshop using a completely different tool set and just see how they compare, see which one I like better. I have a feeling the Illustrator is more suited to this kind of work, but it would be fun to try it in Photoshop. So <laughs> that's, that's what I'm gonna hop into now, drawing in Photoshop and then we'll, we'll see how it goes. So when I think of travel posters, I think of these beautiful yet simple travel posters for the national parks. These are created by the Works Progress Administration or the WPA in the early 1900s. And so I'll give you a little bit of the history of that and um, why they're so cool and then go over some of my process for how I did this in Illustrator and in Photoshop and maybe you can get some, some tips there and from the, from the things that I learned. So starting out, these posters came about um, after the Great Depression when a lot of people lost their jobs. Um, President Roosevelt, he created uh, this new deal in which entailed a bunch of different new agencies that were designed to create jobs and boost the economy. One of those was the Works Progress Administration, and it did a lot of things, um, including infrastructure, building, you know, roads, um, I can't remember, but a bunch of things. One small part of that included hiring a bunch of artists to create promotional posters for the national parks specifically, which were relatively new and you know needed some marketing. So this created jobs for artists and the process they used was silk screening. So they could create their cutout, their stencil, um, you know, different layers of that, put that down on the, the, the fabric or the paper and then put one color over that and then do the next stencil and the color over that and build up that way, which is why this, these posters are have these simple colors and these you know straight lines because that's how it was created. That was just the process. So it definitely wasn't fine art. You know, this was mass produced um, advertising designed to be maybe even thrown away eventually in some cases. And it uh, but it created a lot of jobs. And I think it's a style that has a certain charm to it. So that's the style that I'm trying to mimic here. Um, basically just have solid colors, relatively straight lines, and keep it kind of pretty simple. So I used a lot of the pen tool where you can just click and drag, you can make straight lines or curvy lines and just kind of freeform it here. I like it because it's non-destructive. If you have a shape that you don't quite like, you can just click on a point and drag it and adjust it. Then there's this, also this other cool tool I use that I kind of rediscovered. It's a brush tool in Illustrator. Um, it didn't have the princess <laughs> the pressure sensitivity um, like I'm used to it in Photoshop. So I had to manually adjust the size of the brush to get the smaller parts of the cloud as I was going through it. But overall, I think it worked pretty good. It was able to create my vector shapes, just kind of brushing them in there. Then the sun, of course, is just another shape. So pretty easy to just kind of throw these things in, which is, I think that's why I thought Illustrator would work well for this because you can kind of work quickly in Illustrator. You don't have to manually create everything. Um, for example, these trees here are symbols, which I also newly discovered. Um, I don't use these very much, but they are predefi predefined shapes and images that you can find in Illustrator and kind of just paste them in like a, like a pattern, kind of you can adjust them, the size or different things about them and just kind of hodgepodge it together. So it worked really good. Now, in retrospect, I realized this gradient that I'm doing here um, maybe wasn't like 100% true to form. I think it still fits in. It doesn't seem too out of place, but from all of the examples that I looked at from the WPA posters, they are just solid col colors because of that's what the process was. So if I did it again, maybe I'll try to avoid using um, gradients, but that's okay. So yeah, here's my Jurassic Park poster. I tried to find some good fonts for it and create a little bit of a, of a slogan on it, you know, some sort of advertising thing and bring it together. This is really fun. I think it took me overall about an hour to create. 
added some flares from the sun, which I guess you could do with the, the traditional silk screen printing. That just might be a little trickier. You'd have to blend colors. So um, I found a font that looks pretty good, just like Jurassic Park um, from online. And yeah, then I just kind of free freehanded these pterodactyls in here. Don't look too close. They're not great, but I, I knew they're going to be small, so that didn't matter too much. Okay, so this is using Illustrator to create a WPA-style WPA travel poster. So here's my travel poster for Jurassic Park. Explore the past and visit Jurassic Park National Forest, brought to you by Works Progress Administration. <laughs> anyway, I think it turned out pretty good, especially for my first time doing this kind of thing. So now let's jump on over to Photoshop and see if I can do something similar. Okay, my inspiration for this one was none other than Mordor. Take it to the ring, Frodo. Take it to the ring. Take the ring to Mordor, Frodo, to save us all. Um, basically, I started using a brush to just kind of sketch in the things and then filling them in to make them look solid, like the screen printing. But um, it worked okay. I also originally started doing, actually for both projects, I started to just look for a color scheme first. Um, I found one much easier for the other poster, for Mordor. It was much harder to find a good color, color scheme. So you'll see my colors switch back and forth here a little bit. Now I decided what I was doing here didn't work great. See, I'm just kind of brushing in the the highlights on this but it kind of just looks like a like a photoshop drawing that i might do any other day so i thought scratch this i can't 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 do this <laughs> it's not working right so instead i switch over to the lasso tool with the sharp corners and that makes it a little bit easier to block in the shapes and then i just paint bucket in the the solid fill and was able to get the, the get the appeal, get the, the same look better that way. So I have to go had to go back and kind of remove some of my other stuff so it was uniform. But I think it worked pretty good. And so basically that's the entire process for doing this style in Photoshop. Um, and I found that this lasso tool is the best way to do it. You just block out the shapes with that and then fill it in. There's really, you know, there's no assets or stamps what do they call them um as they didn't well maybe there are those for photoshop <laughs> maybe i think actually there are i didn't use any uh, mordor didn't require trees or anything so it was all hand done the clouds were a little little trickier to do with the lasso tool um, in illustrator that brush was great and in retrospect i could have used a brush in illustrator no i don't know i don't think it would have got the crisp lines as well mm. Maybe, so I don't know if I did it the best way, but it turned out okay. And then I went in, I decided to go back to my reference image and just kind of take the, the colors out of that to get the right uh, feel, the look and feel and the right color scheme because it just wasn't working for me. And so true to the original, taking colors right out of that helped a lot. Um, I think it made it more cohesive. So already you can kind of see here the, the, the composition, the volcano and Mount, I guess it's Mount Doom and the Eye of Sauron. And it comes, to better, comes together pretty quickly. I think this one um, took a little bit quicker than it did in Illustrator, but not necessarily um, better. I think I liked the tools in, in Illustrator. I'm a little bit more diverse and just seemed, yeah, seemed overall better suited for this, for those crisp edges and for the ability to, to make fine tune adjustments with the, the, the points in that you have in the vector tools of Illustrator. And there you have it. There's the poster. Mordor National Park. Go take a walk around Mount Doom and find some wildlife. Like, you know, these crazy beasts flying around in the sky. All right, that's all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please have a good day and remember to smile.